Two of Class 3A substate play, and tonight the Scott City Beavers will hit the road here for the boys in the quarterfinal opener as they will be taking on the Holcomb Longhorns. This should be a fun game here. Adam Cadavy with you here. Studio engineer is Stephanie Sanchez back in the Mix 94.5 studios. We're also on tonight with the Beaver Broadcasting Network. So tonight we have the four versus five matchup with Scott City and Holcomb, which should be a fun one here tonight. And it should be probably the closest game, we presume, of tonight's substate and the best matchup. Scott City comes in as a number five seed in the Lake and Substate, 9-11 on the air, trying to snap a three-game losing streak that Holcomb started uh, two and a half weeks ago. Last Tuesday night in their last downing, the Beavers kind of had a rough uh, third quarter and into the fourth quarter and ended up losing to the Goodland Cowboys 41-37. to They're 9-11 and on the year, finished 2-4 and in Great West Activity Conference play. On the other side, the Holcomb Longhorns are 9-11 and on the year. They have won three of the last four coming into the postseason. Their only loss was at Hugoton, where they lost 49-35. Last Tuesday night, they met up with an old friend from the High Plains League and the Syracuse Bulldogs and picked up a 45-37 win. They're 11-9 on the year, and they finished two and four in the Great West Activity Conference as well. More to come in your pregame show. We'll take this three-minute break, and when we do come back, we'll have a pregame interview with head coach Brian Ginger. We also tell you the uh, first-half scores already as uh, the other three quarterfinal games tipped off at six. We'll have those halftime scores for you as well. When we come back after this three-minute break, this is Scott City Beaver basketball. Beaver basketball. The world needs more farmers. People who know the land. People who support rural communities. People who are as diverse as each acre they care for. But unless you've been born and raised on a family farm, it's nearly impossible to become a farmer. That's why we are building a team of people from our hometown and across the world to do what they love. We are not just a family farm. We are a multi-family farm. We are Volgamore Family Farms. Is your dog ungroomed and smelly? Then come on by the new and improved Wagon Wash, located at 501 Jackson Street in Scott City, Kansas. We added on a dog wash for your pet's hygienic needs. There are six different modes you can choose from. Shampoo, oatmeal conditioner, rinse, odor control, flea and tick, and blow dry. Our facilities are regularly cleaned and we have a vending machine full of treats for you and your pet. Follow us on Facebook at Wagon Wash Car Wash. Adding value to our community has been our priority since day one. That's why the Scott Co-op is here with eight elevator locations, two service stations, five car trolls, bulk fuel and oil delivery, as well as a full service agronomy department, including agronomy services, seed, chemical, fertilizer, and custom application. Visit us online at scottcoop.com or download our app for more information. Scott Co-op is a proud supporter of our local communities. As your local community foundation, we are dedicated to preserving local wealth so the communities in and around Scott County will forever remain an attractive place to live, work, and raise a family. We respond to the needs of our community through grant making, scholarships, and other special projects. To learn more, visit us online at scottcf.org.
things ended with uh, Goodland and, and that uh, four-point loss there. And how have your players responded after that loss and maybe not one of their better games of the year? Uh, pretty much the same way they've responded all year. Um, you know, I could count on about one finger the amount of practices that we've had that were kind of a letdown. Um, and one of them was on a Friday where we didn't have a game. And so, uh, you know, that's uh, th that's kind of things that happen. But these guys have showed up ready to go every single practice. They've gotten better every single practice. And uh, it's been nothing different uh, over the last week. It was a weird situation just that Jackson only had four points and they guarded him. But you had others step up. And I know you don't want to see that, but you have to like to see that you had, saw others really step up with it, him really being the focal point. Yeah, we have uh, – we always have guys that are mm -hmm. that are willing to, to take shots and uh, I thought the big thing you know against Goodland was you know Sage's minutes that he gave us, uh, Kamenin's minutes that he gave us on the defensive side uh, I thought they really did a good job of, of uh, you know limiting them to one shot rebounding uh, but yeah you know we, we don't want Jackson to be out there and, and be a you know he's not a pass first guy, he's a great passer he's just not that guy for us uh, he's a score first guy and uh, that's the mentality that uh, we need out of him, um, you know it's it's going to be it's going to be a grind tonight because uh, you know he's going to be met with some physicality, uh, so he he needs to uh, operate in space and uh, and uh, we're going to give him the opportunities to you know face up and play a little bit more in space than just back to the basket, and uh, you know I think that'll that'll give him some easier looks, but uh, yeah you know when he got in foul trouble it, it's hard for you know 15 to 18 year old kids to sit out for you know a half an hour and, and not do anything and then get reengaged and I, I don't know that that was the problem. I think he was just other guys were playing well, so he was trying to find them. And and uh, but uh, you know that we we don't want that to be the case tonight. You know we we really want him to be aggressive. Once again, it is Coach Brian Gentry here in the pregame tonight. Scott City faces uh, Hogan Longhorns round three. It's uh, one to one there. Each but uh, team winning on their home court here. But you take a look at Holcomb. They'll be the four seed. You guys the five seed. And uh, they had a little bit of an addition from the last time you guys played them uh, two and a half weeks ago. Yeah, with uh, Mesa coming back. You know off the knee injury. I mean, he got some minutes, you know, in their last game. Last, and, uh, you know, just, you know, from everything that I remember about him, I just – he gave me so many problems last year, you know, rebounding the ball. He's just a, just kind of a bulldozer in there that attacks rebounds. Uh, probably not uh, up to speed, you know, uh, physically right now, uh, just coming back off that knee injuries. But, uh, you know, everybody, you know, over time gets a little bit better. So I'm sure he'll be a little more active than he was in that Syracuse game. Uh, a kid that you definitely have to keep off the boards because, uh, you know, he's going to go to him hard. Uh, but with that being said, uh, it's still the same offense. You know, we know what to look for. Uh, defensively, they, they kind of threw everything with the kitchen sink at us, uh, you know, when we played down there with the zones and the man and the traps and things like that. So. Um, I think we've prepared for pretty much everything that we could see. Uh, so uh, you never know a Chad. He's uh, he, he's pretty good at what he does, and and uh, but our guys are ready. You know, I, I think they're eager. They're hungry to get after it. And you know, we always we, we ended the last couple practices with what if. You know, what what if we go on a three game run? You know, one game at a time. But uh, we're more than capable of doing it. And uh, I think these guys are excited to do it. Should be a fun game here tonight, opening around to Substate, Scott City, and Holcomb here. Coach Brian Gentry in the pregame. Thanks again for the time, and good luck to you guys. All right, thanks, Adam. That was Scott City Beaver Coach Brian Gentry. Your pregame interview brought to you by Farm Bureau Financial Services with Hugh and Berta Benz and Scott City and Leota. More to come in your pregame show. We'll have a breakdown of the matchup. We'll bring us starters, keys of the game, and the tip-off. After this timeout, this is Scott City Beaver Basketball. service in real estate put Stephanie Shapland at Shapland Real Estate to work for you. 
Property homework is what we do best at Chaplin Real Estate. We put forth every effort to get results that move you. Our expertise in buying and selling residential, commercial, and agriculture property is built on the tradition of trust and thoroughness that you deserve. Chaplin Real Estate takes pride in our community and in cheering on our students in all that they do. Give Chaplin Real Estate a call or visit our website today. With over 10 years of experience, Jamie at JW Enterprise can repair your windshield quickly and conveniently. Even if you don't have time to make it to the shop, Jamie can fix your windshield from your home or he can come get your vehicle for you. JW Enterprise is insured and Safe Flight certified. He might be operating under a different name, but Jamie still provides the same quality of service. Let Jamie at JW Enterprise fix that chip in your windshield now. Find JW Enterprise on Facebook or give him a call at 785 Two six zero seven 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 three. Western State Bank proudly supports Scott Community High School students and athletes as they prepare for another great year of achievements. Just as our students prepare for another successful year, we encourage you to be prepared for whatever life may bring you. Stop in and talk with a knowledgeable staff at Western State Bank, whether it be a new home loan, financing for your business, or any one of our checking and savings account options. We're here to help you. Make sure to check out all of our internet banking options provided at WSBKS.com. Western State Bank, member FDIC. And as always, go Beaver! There's nothing more spacious than Western Kansas, and nobody closer than our communities. We are determined to keep our communities connected to schools, kids to teachers and parents. We believe a connected world is a better place. We're more than what we do for our hometowns. It's what we do with our hometowns. s and is proud to be your family, your friends, your neighbor. scores for you. That one might be a little bit more of a surprise. It's only 32-27 Colby at the break over the Southwestern Heights Mustangs in the one versus eight matchup. So Southwestern Heights hanging tough with the number eight ranked team in class 3A. Other halftime scores in the sub state right now. And they've all probably are into the second half now. But Lakin with a 32 to 11 lead over Larned at halftime. Also in the two versus seven matchup, it's Goodland 38, Cimarron 21. So that's how that is set up. So winners once again advance to Friday semifinal round. The Thursday semifinal. Finals on the girls' side of the Tuskegee Goodland. They'll be taking on number four seed Holt. That'll be the late game. The six o'clock game will be the two versus three matchup with Cimarron and Colby. And so that's how that's set up. Back to this boys' matchup. It was 8-8 eight eight when Scott City and Hogan played on the 10th of February. And that sparked a run. There was Hogan beating Scott City, Cimarron, and Syracuse. Their only loss in there is to Hugot. And Scott City has not won in three weeks. Their last win came against Lakin in a thriller, 49-46. to They had the lead... Uh, most of that second half, or in the third quarter, I should say, against Holcomb. Last time they met here on the 10th of February, Jackson Rumford got his fourth foul, and then Holcomb went on a 9-0 run to close out the third quarter, and Scott City could not uh, recover from that. It ended up losing that game 47-240, uh, so Scott City cannot afford to, to do that here uh, tonight. They have to play ahead most of the night here. Holcomb plays much better at home than they do on the road. So we'll see how this uh, shapes up here tonight. But, uh, of course, Holcomb this year, hurt, what hurt Scott City last time was Drayton Knoll, the 6'4 sophomore. He had 19 points in the meeting. And uh, he had...
had uh, 19 points. He did not score the first time around, but had 19 points in the last game. He averages 10.7 points. Caden Hardy, another sophomore, averages nine a game. And then Corbin Johnson, a freshman at 8.4, he had 11 in the last meeting. And they only have one senior right now, and that is Chris Palacios. He averages seven points and six boards a game. A team that averages 51 points a game, Scott City averages 50.8. So uh, you can't get any, about it any more even than that. The Beavers really had the lead there in that third quarter, and it felt like that they were going to run away from Goodland on Tuesday night in that third quarter and kind of pull away, but they they went on a long drought, and Goodland took advantage of that. Scott City, though, did not help the matters out there. They committed turnover after turnover. After they forced turnovers, really what turn came down to the at the end there, that third and fourth quarter, was Goodland was, t was scoring off the turnover. Scott City was not, and that really hurt them in the end in a 41-37 setback just a week ago. But Scott City will have to get more production tonight out of Jackson Rumford, Jackson Rumford than the last game. He had a season low of four points at Goodland last week, but it's been good to see more consistency out of the seniors, Lawson Bailey and Dylan Metzger in the last couple of games. They've been right up there as well, but also need Alex Turango to continue to hone in on his defense. He's really been a bright uh, star at the defensive end for Scott City this year, and Avery Nolan has been pretty good at times as well. He's been a scoring threat as well, but for the Beavers to advance, they're going to have to pull out a big win here in what's going to be an intense and a hostile environment here tonight against a pretty good Holcomb team that's young but talented here and a team that only has one senior, but they play a lot of sophomores and even two freshmen in the starting lineup. So we should be in for a treat. As I mentioned, the winner goes to Lakin on Friday night. They'll take on either Colby or Southwestern Heights. Try to get an update on that score here real quick. And there in the second half, Colby's actually pulled away. That was a five-point game at halftime, but Colby's extended their lead out to 17, 48-31, and that's going to make it 50 to 31. They'll lead going into the fourth quarter. So Colby with an 18 to 4 run in that third quarter to go up 50 to 31 heading into the fourth quarter. That game is at the Colby Event Center there as uh, for Lakin and Larned, they're still underway. That's 42-23 for the Bronx late third quarter there, just about 15 minutes away in uh, Lakin. As the teams head to the benches, it's going to be different tonight from the last meeting here in this building. Both uh, Scott City and Lakin are in different uh, spots there. They switched benches, and it's more toward how it's supposed to be for postseason. The home team's always to the right of the scorer's table, and the visitor visiting team is always to the left of the scorer's table. So that's how it's set up here tonight. It's the, it's the opposite in the regular season when Holcomb is the home team. As we are ready for starters, let's get to your starting lineups. They're presented by Security State Bank in Scott City and Leota Free Bill Pay and Online Banking. Safe, secure, and easy to use. Member FDIC. For the Scott City Beavers, once again coached by Brian Gentry in the seventh season, assisted by Joey Meyer and Drew Kite. And to be the regular five, as always, Dylan Metzger, the 6'1 senior, averaging 10.3 points and 2.4 rebounds a game. Avery Knoll, the 6'3 junior, at 5.8 points, 4.5 rebounds a contest. Alex Tarango, he is a 5'9 sophomore, averaging 3.6 points and 2 rebounds a game. Jackson Rumford, a 6'5 sophomore. Uh, he averages 17.4 points and 8.2 rebounds. And Lawson Bailey, a 6'1 senior, 10 points and 4.7 boards a game. Dylan Metzger, Avery Knoll, Alex Tarango, Jackson Rumford, and Lawson Bailey to five to start tonight for the Scott City Beavers. And uh, for the Holcomb Longhorns are coached by Chad Novak in his 12th season. He is assisted by Trevor Staff, Aaron Miller, Trey Teeter. They'll start two freshmen, two so or make that yeah, two sophomores and a senior. Chris Palacios, he's a lone senior, 5'11, averages 7.3 points. 
and 5.8 rebounds a game. Brody Denniston, the 5'5 freshman at 4.6 points and 1.9 rebound a game. The 5'9 freshman Corbin Johnson at 8.4 points and 2.2 rebounds a game. Caden Hardy, a 6'1 sophomore, 9.2 points, 3.2 rebounds a game. Drayton Hall, the 6'4 sophomore, at 10.7 points and 4.9 boards a game. Chris Palacio is Brody Denniston, Corbin Johnson, Caden Hardy, and Drayton Hall. All-time series, Hulk, or Scott said he leads the series 33-31. to 31. Holcomb's won the last four meetings in this building, including the playoff game in 2020. Last time the two teams met in sub-state, that was dominated by Holcomb, 74-51. The series in the sub-states in the postseason between Scott City and Holcomb, it is dead even at three apiece. Holcomb has won the last two. Scott said he won three in a row, 11, 12, and 13. We will step aside for a timeout. We'll have your opening tip and keys to the game. We'll take this timeout. This is Scott City Beaver Basketball. Beaver Basketball. For all heating and cooling of Scott City is a proud sponsor of Beaver Activities. Brent and Angie take pride in helping our activities and support our students 100%. They can also help you with any heating and cooling needs that you have. Give Faroe Heating and Cooling a call at 620-872-3508 and see if they can help you with your needs today. If you are in the market for a new or used vehicle, check out J&R Car and Truck Center of Scott City. J&R Car and Truck has a fully trained service and parts staff for repairs on most makes and models of vehicles. Locally owned and operated, J&R Car and Truck Center provides over 250 new and used vehicles in stock and ready to be delivered. Stop on in and check out jrcarandtruck.com for your next vehicle. J&R Car and Truck Center, your Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC dealership in Scott City. If you make a mistake, just move ahead. You can't let one mistake turn into two or three in a row. Third key, you got to rebound and control the paint. Those are your keys to the game. Scott City tonight wearing the light blue tops with the white numbers and letters and the dark blue trim around those numbers and letters. Holcomb with the white tops, the orange numbers and letters, and that long horn on the front and the orange or the white and black trim. Palacios and Jackson run for the tip center, and Scott City wins a tap. And this last sub-state quarterfinal game is underway. The other three games tipped off at 6 o'clock. Clock. Holcomb in a man-to-man -to, -man to start things off up top. It's to Dylan Metzger. He'll be guarded by Palacios. Actually, it's more of a matchup zone right now for Holcomb. Left side to Jackson Rumford. Looking to put it on the floor. He's guarded by Noel Knights. Pick and roll to Bailey. Catches underneath. He will reverse it. Oh, he missed it. And the rebound, and that's going to be a foul on Avery Noel of the back right away. And Scott said he got what they wanted right off the tip there, but Noel with the foul his first after the box outs by Palacios. And that'll be Holcomb, or Scott City's first team foul. Scoreless, 7.34 to go first quarter. The Beavers will apply a little pressure in the backcourt. With it is Brody Denniston, and now goes over to Palacios, trying to get it across back to Denniston. Denniston in the backcourt, back to Palacios. That was close to being 10. That should have been 10. Left side, it goes to Corbin Johnson. That was more like 12, but they play on. 7.14 to go first quarter, still scoreless. Holcomb with their first trip down the court. Brody Dennison up top. He's guarded by Alex Tranga right now. But low bounce pass left to Caden Hardy. He's guarded by Metzger off the screen. And it goes 
Now up top, Palacios for a deep three. Rimming off and the rebound. We're going to get a push. And underneath says official Brett Post. And that is going to even up the fouls. Drayton Noel with a push after Trango grabbed the board. And so both teams with one foul on their trip down the floor. And Woth with a missed shot as we're at the 6.55 mark of the first quarter. Still scoreless. The first time that these two teams played, Scott City got both Drayton Noel and also Caden Tischer in a foul trouble in that first quarter. Rumford with it. He'll drive the left baseline. He'll drive in. His layup is good on the left side with the right hand, and Scott City leads first. Two to nothing, 6.38 to go first quarter as they apply some full court pressure here. Within the backcourt is Caden Harding. It's thrown away. First turnover on Holcomb. Left side, Metzger fires a three. Too strong, high rebound into the hands of Brody Denniston for Holcomb. Noel had to be careful there. He almost committed foul number two. 6.20 to go here in the opening quarter. 2-0 Scott City lead. And Holcomb with the ball and Holcomb with a miscommunication and they have back-to-back -back turnovers as they throw it away. 2-0 Scott City leading the ball. They'll walk it across from left to right here as we approach six to go first quarter. Metzger with it goes to Lawson Bailey up top to Avery Knoll. Right side to Alex Tarango. Lob entry feed to Rumford. Faces up. Fade away jumper. Little strong. Knoll with the rebound. He gets a strip going up. He loses it but picks it back up. Holds it. Now he'll just drive in. He'll lay it up and score it. Knoll with two and it's 4-0 Scott City with 5.52 to go first quarter. He was stranded there a little bit but did a good job of just going back up with it. And on the transition. Blocked by Jackson Rumford as he kind of flexes toward Palacios. Here comes Lawson Bailey Coast goes layup, yes! He's got it, Chad Novak wants time! 6-0 Scott City with 5.35 to go first quarter and the Beavers off to a hot start. Basketball tonight presented here by Winterland Farms White's Food Liner. Also, Wheatland Electric, Western State Bank, Western Kansas Insurance, Volgamore Family Farms, Turner Sheet Metal, True North Cafe. Also, want to thank Tripac North America, Original Grande, Stevens Veterinary Services, State Farm Insurance, Spencer Pest Control, and Security State Bank. Scott City got that block shot from Rumford, and then they were in transition there. As they took it coast to coast after the miss, and Bailey with the layup to make it six to nothing Scott City after the Jackson run for block shot with 535 to go first quarter and it's Holcomb's ball out of the 32nd timeout so good start for the Beavers they've hit three of their first six shots Holcomb is 0 for their first two but they have two turnovers Scott City applies that little token pressure in the backcourt to make it burn some time a little bit now Holcomb gets across and now they have numbers stepping back is going to be Corbett Johnson and he'll get it left to, or high to Palacios left side to Caden Hardy up top to Johnson entry feed deflected and Scott City forces the turnover good help defense late pass Bailey nice touch pass from Rufford to Bailey for two. It's 8 nothing with 5-12 to go first quarter. A heck of a start for the Beavers as they've hit their last three shots and they're up nearly three minutes into this game. Johnson in the front court left pass to Palacios up top almost and over and back on Holcomb. Scott City off to a hot start three minutes in. Long ways to go, about 29 minutes to be exact. Out high right side to Corbin, jo or now Johnson straight away from Caden Hardy goes left to Brody Denniston. He's guarded now by his cousin Metzger. They both wear number three. And now switch off, here is Hardy with it. He'll stop, pop the straightaway triple, bounces off, rebound Rumford. He's got his first board of the night for Scott City. Holcomb 0 for three shooting here. Beavers are up eight to nothing with four and a half to go first quarter. Rumford up top with it, goes to his left. Left with the pass to Avery Noel. Noel will drive right side and he draws the foul. Team foul number two on Holcomb. And that'll be the first on Corbin Johnson, the freshman. Holcomb with three subs to check in. It'll be Cooper Titchener, the 6'2 junior. Also Dominique Orozco and also Jared Harrell, a 6'3 sophomore. Noel to inbound it in, does find Rumford. He'll drive in, hangs, bank shot, yes! He's got four, 10 to nothing. He takes it right at 
Tishner 10 to nothing, 4.17 to go first quarter. Scott City has hit their last four shots from the floor as Holcomb breaks the full court press. Almost a carry by Hardy up top to Roscoe. He's the junior, midway point of this first quarter. The Beavers off to a good start up 10 to nothing. Now up top right side to Palacios around the screen. Goes left side with the pass to Caden Hardy. Entry feed into Tishner, backs his way in, and now he loses it as he hits the deck. Tournament number four, lead pass to Lawson Bailey. Holcomb crowd wanted a foul. Scott City wanted a charge. Jumps up, Bailey. Hey, shoots and scores it. Bailey with six, and it's 12 to nothing with 3.43 to go first quarter. Scott City with six two-point baskets here as they are attacking Holcomb and almost get a turnover. And in the front court, they got the trap. They find Dominic Orozco. Scott City has fired the first haymaker up 12 to nothing with 3.28 to go first quarter. Orozco with it up now right side out high. Here's Hardy guarded by Trago. Left side it goes to Chris Palacios. He's looking for a cutter. Gets a screen. Palacios stops, pops a deep three, buries it. His 23rd three of the year gets Holcomb on the board with 3.13 to go first quarter at 12 to three. As Dylan Metzger walk it across, getting across that 10 second line he does with a pass to Alex Trango back to Metzger left side, Lawson Bailey. Bailey with a left baseline to run for now up top to Avery Knoll. Right side Metzger turns down the deep three, pulls up for the mid-range jumper, short rebound to Caden Tich or Cooper Titchener for Holcomb. Had a good look to Metzger. 12-3 Scott City lead Holcomb the ball. 2.45 to go first quarter. Roscoe with it off the screen. Here's Hardy. A straightaway three. Good. Back-to-back -back threes for the Longhorns and they're two within six here with 2.35 to go first quarter. At that time they had the screen set up and it's now a six-point game. Get it across the pass to Tarango. Now he's going to be trapped up high. Works out of a double team. Flips it back up to Bailey. Left side, Metzger. 2.20 to go first quarter. Holcomb now with the momentum after back-to-back -back threes after they started 0 for 3 with four turnovers. Bailey with his. Holcomb's in his own end. Rumford in the middle of the paint. Throws one up and got it. He has six. 14-6. 2 5 to go first quarter. Good answer back for Scott. Sit it in the Holcomb 6-0 run on back-to-back -back triples. Under two to go first quarter with it is Cooper Tishner out high. Holds it now, gets it to, gets it to Palacio. Who's now in the half-court circle to Dominic Orozco. Looks over at Coach Chad Novak for the offense. If play here. Orozco go to his right. Up top, here's Harrell with it. Now into Cooper Tishner, bowling his way in. Leaves a shot short as he threw it up and a rebound to Scott City. 14-6 Beaver lead. 95 seconds to go first quarter. Rumford with it, hands it off to Metzger, weave up top. Here's Lawson Bailey looking to penetrate. He'll drive down the middle, hangs. Underneath the Rumford, his reverse layup is good. Good ball movement. Rumford with eight, 16-6, 1.22 to go first quarter. Scott City has had great ball movement here, and what a start for them here tonight. End of the front court is Holcomb. Harrell with it, now up top with a minute 10 to go first quarter in the hands of Caden Hardy, who hit a three moments ago. Now a high to Palacios. He'll go to the foul line. Drive right line. Hangs. Almost drug that pivot foot up top. Roscoe now Cooper, or Caden Titchener. He has it at the foul line. Uses up a dribble. Takes a shot. It's partially blocked. And the rebound, Holcomb gets it and goes up and we got a foul. That time, Scott City thinking it was going to go out of bounds. Holcomb gets the rebound, and it's going to be two free throws coming up for Holcomb. And now Avery Knoll has two fouls and two team fouls on the Beavers here with 52.6 to go first quarter. Jared Harrell with the two free throws coming up. He's 53% in the year as a team. Holcomb is at 66%. He leaves the first one short. Whole slew of subs. Scott City with Coy Vance, Sage Steckline, and Dylan Duff. Holcomb brings back in Drayton Knoll. Also, uh, I think, let's see, Corbin Johnson with those, and I believe that's the only two. Second free throw rims off. Five for the rebound into the hands of Corbin Johnson. Another opportunity for Holcomb down 16-6. 48 seconds to go first quarter. Left side to Denniston. He'll, he'll be guarded by Duff. Dribbles behind the back. Almost walked with it. Throws it up top. Corbin Johnson guarded by Steckline. Drives in. Hangs. Floats one up, and it bounces in for two. Johnson's first two. 16-8 with 34 seconds to go first quarter. And Holcomb with back-to-back -back offensive rebound to get those two points there. Defense! 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 Approaching 20 seconds to work for his quarter. Rumford with it. Throws it backside to Duff. Now injury feed into Steck line. Right corner to Duff. He'll take the open three. Oh, too strong. Rebound. Coy Vance backside and then flips it up to Rumford. Underneath to Duff. Right side with 10 seconds. Now in the paint. Rumford floater. Yes! He's got 10. 18 to 8 with 6 seconds to go. 
first quarter. Here comes Holcomb with one second. Here's the 35 footer off the rim. And that's the end of your first quarter thrown by Caden Hardy. What a first quarter for the Beavers. Nine two point baskets, hot shooting. They lead 18 to eight after one. Back in a minute for the second quarter. This is Scott City Basketball. Group in Hayes, Dodge City, Garden City, Liberal, and Topeka. Treat the Scott City up 18-8 thanks to 9-14 of 14 shooting. They were 9-12 of 12 on two-point baskets in that first quarter and 0-2 oh, on threes. Winner takes on Colby. That's gone final. 72-42 Eagles win that one after it was just a five-point game at halftime. We're just underway. Second quarter, it's Holcomb's ball. Scott City got 10 points from Jackson Rumford. Holcomb, Chris Palacios, and Caden Hardy each with a three-point basket. When Scott City led 12 to nothing, they made it 12 to six, and then ball poked away by Steckline as Corbin Johnson was driving to the basket. Holcomb was three of nine from the floor in that first quarter. Two of five on threes in their row of two from the line. Holcomb's ball, 7.39 to go first half. Entry feed into Corbin Johnson, guarded by Steckline. Now to Chris Palacios, guarded by Lawson Bailey. Scott, Scott City State man-to-man, -man. now they have to switch off. Palacios almost carries it and now finds Johnson in the paint. Has to throw it out high to Denniston. Denniston drive left, entry feed into Noel. Goes over and the shot is short. Good defense by Jackson Rumford who collects his second board of the night. Beavers up 10 with the ball, 7.15 to go first half. Their first uh, possession and a big! in three, straight away, downtown Rumford, 21-8. He has 13 points in his 19th triple, gives Scott City their largest lead of the half, and with seven minutes to go first half. With it now left side, there's Palacios up top now to Corbin Johnson. He'll hand it off to Brody Denniston. Up top now to Drayton Olda, working around left side. Nice backdoor cut, and the layup is good for Caden Hardy. He has five, 21-10, 6.44 to go here in the first half as Holcomb ends the Scott City run there of a 9-2 run. So 21-10, Beavers with the lead and the ball. 6.30 to go, first half, left baseline run for no look pass, right corner to Trango. He'll fire a rainbow three and bury it! Alex Trango's fifth three of the year and it's 24-10 with 6.24 to go, first half. Scott City, after going 0-2 on threes in the first quarter, they're 2-2 here in the second quarter, and they're 11 of 16 from the four for the game. Floater in the paint is good for Palacios, makes it 24-12, a 6.06 to go first half. It's coach Brian Gentry will send Camden Volgamore in to check, to the scores table to check in here, the next dead ball. Both teams shooting it on here in the second quarter. Colby, or correction, Holcomb 2 of 3. Scott City 2 of 2. 24-12. Lob skip pass right side to Dylan Metzger. Up top to Alex Trango. In it goes to Steckline. Now goes back to Metzger right side. Guarded by Palacios. Drives right baseline. Takes it strong. A lot of contact. And they'll say last touch by Metzger. No foul. And it's going to be the first or in for Cam Scott City. will be for the first time Camden Volgamore. He will replace Sage Steckline here with 5.39 to go first half. So they let the contact go there, and it's still 24-12 for Scott City. Bounce pass to left side to Caden Hardy around his screen. He'll drive in, loses the handle, but almost stolen away. And a couple of times now, here's Palacios' entry feed into Noel. Leans way in, that's going to be a charge. Rumford takes the charge on Drayton Noel, his second and the team's third. 
And Palacios trying to cool down his sophomore post player, Drayton Knoll, as he'll check out and in will be Cooper Titchener, a 12-point Scott City lead, and Coach Chad Novak, uh, Novak talking to Stu Chance about that call, showing his displeasure. Back to the action here with 5.18 to go second quarter. Ten-point Beaver lead in the ball. Bailey now goes right side to Volgamore. Back up top is Holcomb now in a 2-3 zone. Left side to Metzger. It'll be guarded by Palacios. He'll dribble it toward the top here. As we approach five to go first half. And now to Camden Volgamore. Now to Alex Trango to Lawson Bailey left side entry. Feed to Rumford. Has it left baseline. Trying to back his way in. Finds it up top to Camden Volgamore. Back over to Lawson Bailey. Looking to refeed it into Rumford. They do toward the left baseline. He'll drive. Jump stop. Fade away. Shot too strong. And the rebound into the hands of Cooper Titchener for Holcomb. Good look for Rumford. Just a second miss from the floor. He is 6 of 8 shooting in this first half. The Beavers with a 12-point lead with 4.35 to go before halftime. Brody Denniston and Holcomb is going to see the ball knocked out of bounds. It'll still be Scott or Holcomb basketball. Scott City yet really without a turnover here in this first half. And we got a timeout on the floor. It's a 30-second timeout taken by Coach Brian Gentry with 4.33 to go second quarter. Scott City up 24-12. Basketball presented here by Scott Pro, Security State Bank, also Scott Cannon Records, Scott Cannon Hospital, Scott Cooperative Association, Scott Community Foundation, Scott City Pharmacy Giftologist, Scott City Ice Center, Road and Bean Green Agency, Richards Financial Services, r and Pallets, Our Brothers Auto Body Mechanic, Precision Ag and Seed. Also want to thank Pokey Feeders, Blanham H Insurance, Plain Jan's New Life Market, and Order Supply. Miller Veterinary Clinic, Midwest Mixer, Western Bearing, Metzger Prazels and Metzger Family Farms, McCarty Family Farms, Lone Tree Farms and Livestock, Lebanon Lawn and Tree, and Jackson Legal Group. Scott City started this game out 12 to nothing. They've led by as many as 13. The game right now is at 12. 24-12, 4.33 to go first half. It'll be Beaver, or Holcomb Ball out of the 32nd timeout. Inbound into the backcourt to Brody Denniston. Denniston will be guarded by Alex Trango. Scott City stays man-to-man -man right side to Caden Hardy. 425 to work first half. Nice cut underneath. And now a power dribble pump fake shot up. And no for Cooper Tishner. Jackson Riffer the rebound. And a little frustration. They're going to call a tie-up. And it'll still stay Scott City's ball. Corby Johnson almost picked up his second foul with 4.20 to go second quarter. They already have Cooper T or Great Knoll on the bench with two. Scott City had Avery Knoll right now on the bench with two fouls. He picked up in the first quarter. Here's Rumford looking to drive left, dribbles through the leg, spin move left el toward the left elbow, back up top to Metzger. Halfway point, second quarter. And right corner to Metzger. Scott City with a 12-point lead now at 24-12. Lake and game has gone final. We'll get to that here in a little bit. Driving in Rumford. Nice dish. Bailey. Oh, he left it short. Rebound tipped around and in the hands. And there's a bump on Scott City. Their third team foul of the half. Bailey left it a little short that time. And the foul will be charged to Camden Volgamore first. Scott City's third. Both teams are three fouls. Jared Harrell in. As Scott City on a little bit of a drought here. Three-minute drought. Both teams with a couple-minute of drought. And for the first time is Damon Mace of the 5'10 junior. As his third game of the year, he came back for the first time last week against Syracuse. That was his first game since game one against Cimarron. He had a knee injury, and now here's a three on, way and down for Corbin Johnson. Holcomb's third, three and a half, third, two and then nine, with 3.37 to go first half at 24-15. Now here's Dylan Mesker, Scott City back, quickly back the other way. Left side, Volgamore off the screen up top to Lawson Bailey. Bailey dribbles between the legs, goes to his left, finds Volgamore, almost walked with it. Back up top to Rumford with 3.20 to go. He'll take the guard at three. He'll answer back with the guard at three. He has 16, 27, 15 with 3.13 to go first half. As Scott City hits her second triple, or third triple all in this second quarter. Both teams are three threes here in the half. Almost a foul on Rumford as he tried to go for the steal up top. John and guarded by Volgamore goes right side of the pass. Now interfeed off the hands of Damon Mason. Turnover number six on Holcomb. Avery Knoll with his two fouls returns to the lineup to replace Camden Volgamore. A 27-15 Scott City lead, 2.56 to go second quarter. Mesker to bring it across left to right here in half number one. Late first half. Goes left for the pass to Lawson Bailey. Looking to drive left. He'll take it to the rack and he draws the block. And that's on Corbin Johnson. That is his second and the team's fourth. 
Stu Chance making the call. And now Corbin Johnson with two, Drayton Knoll with two, two of the top three leading scores for the Longhorns now in foul trouble with two fouls. 2.45 to go first half. As they'll lob it in to Rumford, oh, near half court, he'll track it down. Looks to Coach Brian Gentry for the offense. He goes right, guarded by Mason. Nice cut here, strangle the plane. He leaves a floater, short rebound. Every no will go up and score, and he has four. He cleans one up off the glass again, 29-15, with two and a half to go first half. And Scott City with their largest lead of the night at 14. Up top, Damon Mason with a guarded by Metzger. Goes left with the pass to Caden Hardy. Up top, here's Orozco. Turns down the three right side. Palacios thought about taking the three to dozen. Now back out high to Hardy. Mesa left side to Orozco. Looking inside. Back up top, it goes to Palacios. They're working around to Mesa. Now to Caden Hardy. Approaching two minutes to go first half. The screen for Orozco. His three. Bounces off and the rebound. Ripped away by Dylan Metzger for Scott City. The Beavers are up 29-15 with a minute 50 to go first half. Mesker to take it across left to right. We'll get it over to Jackson Rumford. He'll go left around the perimeter, hand it off to now losing and almost walking with it is Avery Noel. Back up top, here's Mesker looking to drive in. Stops and he walks with it. That is Scott City's first turnover of the night with 1.38 to go first half. Cooper Titchener in to replace Damon Mesa. Scott City with a 14 point lead late first half here in Holcomb, 29-15. They have shot the ball well here in this first half. Started out 12 to nothing. Holcomb got it to within 12-6. Hardy with it. Now goes left side to Chris Palacios. He'll fire a deep three, and he'll bury a deep three. He has a 29-18 timeout. Holcomb with 1.22 to go first half. A 30-second timeout taken by Coach Chad Novak with 1.22 to go first half. 29-18 is your score. Basketball brought to you here by Jeff Beaver Advertising, Jan Root Trucking, Jan R. Car and Trucking, HRC Feed Yards, Amy Amy Farms, High Choice Feeders, Harris Chiropractic and Acupuncture, Great Western Tire. Also, Fro Electric, Fro Ag Service, Fro Heating and Cooling, Farm Bureau Financial Services, Neil Baker. Also want to thank JNR Car and Truck Center for providing transportation all season long. You can view their new and pre inventory on the lot at JNR Car and Truck Center, West 5th Street, Scott City. Also online, jrcartruck.com. Holcomb has hit four threes in this half. It's 29-18. After that three by Palacios, he has two of those threes. All the sub-state games except this one has gone final. Goodland over Cimarron tonight, 61-25. to So it's going to be Goodland and Lakin for round three. Those two teams have split. Also, Colby 72-42 over Southwestern Knights. That was a five-point game at halftime. Here's Metzger gets a strip. Back-to-back -back Scott City turnovers. And now Holcomb can make this a nine-point game. And it's almost stolen that time. But Alex Taranga was standing right on the baseline. Good help defense and recovery defense. Also, Lakin with a 63-43 win over Larned. This one to be determined. 105 to go first half. Holcomb can't get it or just gets it in to avoid the five count up top of the pass to Caden Hardy. Hardy with it goes left to Dominic Orozco. Around the screen, Orozco pulls up. Nice give and go. Pump fake, hanging, shooting high off the glass. No. Rebound tipped around. Last touch by Cooper Tishner, who put up the shot. It'll be Scott City Ball with 53.3 to go first half. So far, Scott City playing in one of the keys I had. Play ahead, and they have led it the entire way up 29-18. As Bailey walks it across with 45 seconds to go first half. Sets up the offense. Gives up a dribble, finds Rumford, elbow right. Now flip back to Bailey. Open for a left wing three. He, oh, short rebound to Cooper Tishner for Holcomb. Here come the Longhorns with the ball. Down 11 and almost a double dribble. Now left side, back up top to Tishner. Oh, he, oh my, he almost walked there that time. 20 seconds to go first half. I can see Holcomb going for the final shot of the half. They're down 11, 29-18. They do have the possession arrow in their favor. The foul's really not an issue. Four fouls on Holcomb, three on Scott City. Those may raise here in the second half, though. Seven seconds, six seconds with it. Orozco out high. Crossover dribble, drives in. He will lay it up and miss it. And it's stripped out of there. And it's going to roll out of bounds as the first half comes to an end. Scott City will take an 11-point lead into the break at 29-18 over the Holcomb Longhorns. Halftime show comes your way in three minutes. This is Beaver Basketball.
us, it's about so much more than just providing the technology. It's about enriching the communities we live in. Because your community is our community. Where you live, where you work, where you play, we do too. Whatever you do, and wherever you are, our service supports you. Next Tech Wireless, we are Kansas. describe your career? Rewarding. It's, it's more than just a job. Great vacation, great sick pay. Great opportunities to move forward. Good work environment, good people. Always something new, always something different. Every day you learn something new. Their commitment to education is second to none. They pay for my school. I, I love it because we're all big, one big happy family. 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 It's like a family. Grow your career with American Implement and John Deere. Women at every stage of life want a healthcare experience uniquely theirs, where excellence meets elegance and healthcare is personalized just for you. Scott County Hospital and Scott City Clinics, skilled physicians and nurses will help your family prepare for the birth of your baby. The private, comfortable, secure rooms for labor, delivery, and postpartum care include jacuzzi tubs for pain management during labor. Call Scott City Clinic to set an appointment today. We put our heart in healthcare. Scott City Eye Center has been a leading provider of optometry services and vision care products in the Scott City community since 1999. Our experienced eye doctors offer comprehensive vision examinations that our Scott City Optometry Office specializes in the diagnosis and treatment of a wide array of eye diseases, conditions, and problems. We use advanced diagnostic technology and we are committed to improving the quality of life. Give yourself the gift of clear vision by scheduling an appointment with Dr. Joshua Gooden, OD, today. White's Food Liner is located at 1314 South Main Street in Scott City, Kansas. They are open daily from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Home delivery is available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. just by calling 620-872-5854. They are a full-service grocery store offering a wide selection of varieties at affordable prices. Sign up today for their mobile app. Look for it in the App Play Store under White's Food Liner. Don't forget to visit today. Fairly Feed Yard is dedicated to investing in our facilities and staff to provide the best experience possible for the cattle feeder and in the end, the consumers of our product. We are always in the market to purchase corn and other commodities from local producers. Call our office at 620-872-2111 for current pricing. Our dedicated employees and their families are very important to us and we are proud of their children that are current beavers and individuals that will grow into those roles in the future. Fairly Feed Yard is privileged to support Scott City Youth and are honored to here on the beavers. The world needs more farmers. People who know the land. People who support rural communities. People who are as diverse as each acre they care for. But unless you've been born and raised on a family farm, it's nearly impossible to become a farmer. That's why we are building a team of people from our hometown and across the world to do what they love. We are not just a family farm. We are a multi-family farm. We our Volgamore Family Farms. First half here for Scott City on 59% shooting. We'll get to that here in a little bit. But the Beavers started out up 12 to nothing. They've led by as many as 14. Their lead has been down to six. It's right now at 11 at the break as they outscored Holcomb in that second quarter, 11 to 10, to take a 29 to 18 lead at the break. Adam Kadevi with you here from Holcomb High School. Final sub-state game to be determined here in the quarterfinal round. Three of the four spots are already spoken for on Friday night in Lake, and this is the last one remaining. Scott said he started out 12 to nothing in this game. Holcomb got it to within 12-6 on back-to-back -back threes, but then the Beavers took an 18-8 lead after one. They've led by as many as 14 at 29 to 15. Lake and, or, uh, Holcomb, excuse me, would hit the last points of the half on a three to make it 29 to 18, and that's where we're at here at the break. 
first half scoring looks like this for Scott City. Jackson Rumford at 16 points. He only missed two shots from the field in the first half. Six for Lawson Bailey. He did not score in that second quarter. As also uh, four for Avery Knoll, both on offensive rebounds. And three on a second quarter, three from Alex Tarango. So four Beavers have scored here in this first half as Scott City had just two turnovers. They had back-to-back -back turnovers late in the first half. The first turnover came with a minute 38 to go in the second quarter. That was big as well. Uh, they had three fouls, I mentioned, two turnovers, three steals, ten total rebounds, seven defensive, and three offensive. For Holcomb, they were led by Chris Palacios, the lone Holcomb senior. He had eight. Five each for Corbin Johnson and Caden Hardy, and they each hit a three and a two-point back. Basket, and that's your scoring for Holcomb. The first half, the Longhorns had four fouls, six turnovers. They cut down the turnovers in the second quarter. They just had two of them in that period. They had one steal, six defensive rebounds, two offensive boards for a total of eight rebounds. And both of those offensive rebounds netted points there for Holcomb. We'll take a one-minute break, 29-18. Holcomb trailing Scott City here at the break. Substate quarterfinal game. We'll run down some other stats and finals across the substate after this one-minute break. This is Scott City Beaver Basketball. Is your dog ungroomed and smelly? Then come on by the new and improved Wagon Wash, located at 501 Jackson Street in Scott City, Kansas. We added on a dog wash for your pet's hygienic needs. There are six different modes you can choose from. Shampoo, oatmeal conditioner, rinse, odor control, flea and tick, and blow dry. Our facilities are regularly cleaned and we have a vending machine full of treats for you and your pet. Follow us on Facebook at Wagon Wash Car Wash. Adding value to our community has been our priority since day one. That's why the Scott Co-op is here with eight elevator locations, two service stations, five car trolls, bulk fuel and oil delivery, as well as a full service agronomy department, including agronomy services, seed, chemical, fertilizer, and custom application. Visit us online at scottcoop.com or download our app for more information. Scott Co-op is a proud supporter of our local communities. Inside the Holcomb High School Gymnasium, 29-18 your halftime scores. Uh, run down the first, uh, some other first half stats here. Uh, for Scott City, as I mentioned, they shot the ball pretty well in that first half. They were 9 of 14 in that first quarter. They were 4 of 8 in the second quarter, so they cooled down a bit, but still had a pretty good clip. 59% from the field, but you take a look at where they had their scoring. They had a lot of high percentage shots, and they cash in on all but maybe two right around the rim in that first half. They were 10 of 16 on twos, 3 of 6 on threes. All three of their threes were made in that second quarter. In fact, they only made one two-point basket in the second period. 10 or 13 of 22, as I mentioned, for Scott City in the first half, 59% shooting. For Holcomb, or Scott City, by the way, did not even attempt a free throw in that first half. And for Holcomb, they were 7 of 19, 37%. Just a little bit below their season average, but really what helped them stay in the game uh, was their three-point shooting where they were four of eight on threes and three of 11 on two-point baskets. They missed a lot from around the rim in that first half, and they were 0 of 2 at the foul line. Foul trouble hit both sides. Scott City had Avery Noel with two fouls in that first quarter. For Holcomb, they only had four fouls, but they were by two different players. Corbin Johnson and Drayton Noel, two of their top three scorers. Other scores from earlier tonight in this sub-state, they were 6 o'clock starts. Colby, they were only up by 5 at the break against Southwestern Heights. They ended up pulling away to win 72-42, to and they await the winner of this game Friday night at Lakin Middle School. Speaking of Lakin, they will play another game on their home court. They won over Larna tonight, 63-43. to That game hovered around 20 points for most of the night there. And in the third final, it was all Goodland at 61-25 at home against Cimarron. So Goodland and Lakin will battle on Friday night. And uh, it's Colby against either Scott City or Holcomb. The Beavers need to continue to put the pedal down up 11. Here is they are trying to advance to the sub-state semifinal round for a second consecutive year. 
It will be Holcomb's ball to begin the third eight minutes of play. Scott City comes out of their huddle with Jackson Rumford, Alex Tarango, also Dylan Metzger, Avery Nolan, Lawson Bailey. For Holcomb, it'll be Chris Palacios, also Corbin Johnson, Drayton Knoll, Caden Hardy, and Brody Denniston. Palacios to inbound it right at midcourt as the third quarter is underway here officially inbound into Brody Denniston. Scott City tried to advance to the sub-state semifinals for a second straight year. And Holcomb almost threw it away there, but luckily it was Palacios who tracked it down in the quarter who went right to him. With it is Corbin Johnson as Scott City stays man-to-man -man up top. But Denniston goes right with the pass to Caden Hardy. If he didn't know, goes goes way in a shot up no and a foul. That'll be on every no and his third foul as he got the hack. That'll be Scott City's First team foul of the half with 7.40 to go third quarter. So you knew Holcomb wanted to go right away to Noel, who was scoreless in the first half. He only had one shot attempt. He had two fouls. But he's a very good free throw shooter at 79%. Free throw is good, and he's on the board. 29-19, 7.40 to go third quarter. First time that Holcomb scored first in a quarter all night. This to make it a nine-point game. And Noel has that one rimming in and out. Jackson Rumford collects his fourth board. Holcomb just won a fourth the line tonight. Scott City has not hit a free throw. Rumford uses up his dribble. Now bounce pass left side to Lawson Bailey. Up top to Rumford. Goes right to Alex Trango. He'll launch a three and bury his second three. He has six, 32-19 with 7.24 to go third quarter. That's Scott City's fourth triple of the night. Lead back up to 13 in the front court with it is Noel. Works out of a double team, drives left side. Spin move, layup is too strong in the rebound. Back side to Lawson Bailey for Scott City. Had a nice move. Bailey into the front court. Stops now left side to Avery Noel. Back up top to Rumford. Surveys, bump fakes on a three, then hands it off to Metzger, who's scoreless. Looks to drive in, cut, or steps back out. Nice give and go to Rumford. His lamp is good. He's got 18. 34 19 with 6.50 to go, third quarter. And Scott City now with their largest lead at 15. Corbin Johnson with it. Works out of a double team with the pass. As a lot of players collide, right side it goes over to Caden Hardy. Up top to Corbin Johnson. 15 points. Scott City lead early second half. Off a of screen up top it goes to Denniston. Corbin Johnson right side to Caden Hardy. Back up top to Palacios. They work it around to Johnson. Left side to Denniston. Off a of screen. Here's a three launched and down. Caden Hardy got the screen. He has eight and Holcomb calls time with 6.20 to go third quarter, and it's 34-22 Scott City. We'll come back in one minute. This is Beaver Basketball. Beaver Basketball. Adding value to our community has been our priority since day one. That's why the Scott Co-op is here with eight elevator locations, two service stations, five car trolls, bulk fuel and oil delivery, as well as a full-service agronomy department, including agronomy services, seed, chemical, fertilizer, and custom application. Visit us online at scottcoop.com or download our app for more information. Scott Co-op is a proud supporter of our local communities. As your local community foundation, we are dedicated to preserving local wealth so the communities in and around Scott County will forever remain an attractive place to live, work, and raise a family. We respond to the needs of our community through grant making, scholarships, and other special projects. To learn more, visit us online at scottcf.org. Exceptional results. Holcomb ended that quick 5-0 Scott City run with the Caden Hardy three as eight on two threes. Holcomb with five threes in the night and out of their timeouts. It's Scott City's ball, 34-22, Beavers up. 6.15 to go third quarter. A lot of scoring in this third quarter. We're not even two minutes in. Dylan Metzger with it. Uses up a dribble right side to run for pump fakes on the three. He'll drive in on Noel. Back his way in. Now finds Alex Trango on high. Goes right side. Here's an Avery Noel three. Well short. And the rebound into the hands of Drayton Noel for Holcomb. 12 points, Scott City lead, Holcomb ball, a little over two minutes into the second half. Johnson left side, Palacios turns down the three, and Noel has great position, loses the ball, now picks it back up, and his stuff going up, and that's going to be a tie-up as Rumford got the stuff, and it's going to belong to Scott City. That was good defense. Seventh Holcomb turnover, Beavers ball up a dozen, 5.40 to go third period. As Bailey to walk, get it across the 10-second line, he'll go to his left, use up his dribble, 
Now finds Alex Tarango right side to Dylan Metzger. Metzger into Jackson Renford right side. He'll take the 16-footer, leaves it short. Rebound, Holcomb. There was three white shirts underneath there and into the hands of Palacios. And now straight away, here's a three. No, rebound loose. Holcomb touches it last. That was put up by Corbin Johnson. And out of bounds, it belongs to Scott City with 5.18 to go third quarter. Things may be settling down a little bit here in this second half. 12-point Scott City lead and the ball 34-22. Noel to bring it across. Finds Dylan Metzger out high in the half-court circle. Now goes to his left around the screen. He's still scoreless here tonight. Up top to Alex Tarango. Tarango with it off the screen left side. Bailey ball fake. He'll look to drive in. Jumps up. Tries to go up and he's fouled. Who are they going to get that foul on? It's going to be the third on Corbin Johnson. It is there on Johnson, not on Drayton Noel. Johnson with his third foul with 4.58 to go third quarter. Scott said his first trip to the line tonight. Lawson Bailey, who has six points. On the year, Lawson Bailey just 44%. Sky City was 3 of 9 at Goodland last week, and that free throw crawls in. 35-22 with 4.58 here in the third as Jared Harrell in to replace Corbin Johnson, who has five points and now three fouls and one rebound. Bailey second, and gets a nice soft bounce. He has eight, 36-22. 4.58 to go third quarter. Scott City with a little pressure in the backcourt. Now he'll use up the dribble. Does Palacio still. Now he has it back and he drives right side. And that one's the ball knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Trango, they'll say, with 4.49 to go. That was close to a 10-second violation on the Longhorns. About a couple seconds break there. Palacio's trying to get it in the front court. He has to find the safety valve, clear in the backcourt to Brody Denniston. He'll bring it across left to right in the front court now with it right side. Off a of screen, here's a three straight away. No. Rebound in the hands of Noel. He'll go up and he's fouled. He'll get two free throws. And that'll be on Jackson Rumford, his first. Scott City's second foul of the half with 4.36 to go third quarter. Noel, who's at the line, was one of two earlier in this quarter to open up the half. With 4.36 to go third quarter, 14-point Scott City lead. Noel, as I mentioned, a 79% free throw shooter, and he gets that one to go. He's 2 of 3 at the line and has just two points, 36-23. Dominic Garasco in to replace Brody Denniston. Noel's second, Charity Toss also good. He'll exit. Cooper Titchener replaces him, 36-24. Scott City's lead back down to a dozen as the team's trade free throws there. Holcomb now three of four at the line this quarter, three of six for the game. Scott City just two of two on their lone trip to the line. Rumford with it. He'll hand it off to Alex Trango. He'll stop, pop a straightaway triple. That one won't get in. Ball tipped out high in the hands of Roscoe, and Holcomb has it. Down the dozen here with 4.20 to go third quarter. No, or, uh, Trango's first miss from three-point range here tonight. Roscoe with it, gets a screen, and now almost loses it as he throws it to Caden Hardy. 4.08 to go third quarter, 36-24. Lob somehow gets the Titchener. Shot is blocked from behind by Rumford, who grabs the board his fifth of the night. Rumford will take it across, stops. Up top, nice cut. Here's Bailey driving in his floater. Up, yes, he's got 10. 38-24, nice flash to the basket by the senior with 3.50 to go third quarter. As Scott City extends the lead back up to 14, their largest lead of the game has been at 15. With it is Palacios up top, goes left to Roscoe. Gets a screen, goes to his right, now up top. Tishner, he takes the straightaway triple, and he buries his first three of the year. 38-27 with three and a half to go third quarter. I'm not going to lie, he almost looked like he stuttered his steps there right at the top of the key before he took that shot. The officials let it play through. Holcomb 6-3 of the night. Here's Bailey driving left side. And now to Jackson Rumford with three minutes and change to go third quarter. Rumford looking to drive in. Now needs help. Finds Alex Trango out high. He'll drive left side. Up top to Rumford for an answer back three. Yes! He's got 21. And it's back to a 14-point game with 3.03 to go. Coach Brian Gentry calls time. It's a full time out. Let's come back in one minute. This is Beaver Basketball. As your local community foundation, we are dedicated to preserving local wealth so the communities in and around Scott County will forever remain an attractive place to live, work, and raise a family. We respond to the needs of our community through grant making, scholarships, and other special projects. To learn more, 
Visit us online at scottcf.org. to offer our third annual Ag Future Scholarship Program. If you're a high school senior or current college student originally from Western Kansas or Southeastern Colorado who is planning a career in the ag industry, apply for one of our 10 available $1,000 scholarships. More information may be found on our company website or at any of the American Implement and Western State Bank locations. Hurry, the deadline to apply is March 31st. Member FDIC. A big answer back three there by Jackson Rumford, his third three of the game. He has 21, and Scott City back up by 14 with 3.03 to go third quarter at 41 to 27. Back out of the full Scott City timeout, Holcomb's basketball. Scott City now has hit five threes tonight as Holcomb gets it in the front court. That ball, they'll say thrown away, and it's going to be a turnover, the eighth of the night uh, on the Longhorns. Scott City just two turnovers tonight. With 2.51 to go third quarter, up by 14, can extend their lead here. Metzger with it out high, guarded by Palasi, has almost carried it, goes left to Lawson Bailey. He'll try a three. Oh, that's too strong. Last touch, they'll say, by Holcomb on the backside board, and it'll still stay with the Beavers as Brody Dennison and Corbin Johnson end to replace. Cooper Titchener and Dominic Orozco. So you see Holcomb go a lot smaller, maybe more quickness into their lineup right now. No with it. Nice position for Bailey underneath. Pump fakes. Bank shot. Yes. Had great position on Corbin Johnson. He has a dozen. 43-27. 2.31 to go. Third quarter. Scott City now their largest lead of the night at 16 with 2.20 to go. Third quarter. That's almost that could have been 10 easily. Very close. But Holcomb just gets it across. And now to Jared Harrell. Uh, stepping back. Here is Caden Hardy. He'll drive in. His layup is good. Nice strong move for him. He has 10. 43-29 with 2.09 to go third quarter. That'll end the little quick 5-0 Scott City run. Alex Stranga right corner to Metzger for his first three of the night. Too strong, but Bailey on the backside. Scoop and follow for his 14th point. 45-29 with 1.55 to go third quarter. I guess you could give Metzger the assist on that as Holcomb just takes it in the front court. Denniston left side to Palacios. Palacios with it, trying to direct traffic. Minute 40 to go third period. Up top now, Palacios drives in. His floater right lay line is short, rebound loose. And we're going to get a tie up. It'll still be Holcomb's ball on the possession arrow. In for Holcomb will be Drayton Old to replace Jared Harrell. Dylan Duff in to replace Alex Trengo. I think this might be his first time out. And Coy Vance will get him in. He will replace whom? Avery Knoll with 96 third quarter seconds remaining. 45-29 Scott City lead. Holcomb's ball after the tie-up. Palacio is looking to trigger it in. And just gets it in to avoid the five count left corner to Caden Hardy. Top to Denniston, goes right side to Palacios. He'll penetrate at the foul line, goes right side. Here's Johnson, drives in, backside. Palacios fires a three, good. He has three threes in 11, and it's 45-32 with 1.20 to go third quarter. And now Holcomb sets up in a 1-2-2, two, two, three quarters court trap for the first time tonight. Duff with it in the backcourt. Scott said he needs to get it across, and Brian Gentry will burn a 30-second timeout with 1.10 to go third quarter. That saves the possession, so both teams down to two timeouts. Out. Basketball presented here by First National Bank, Fairley Companies, Farm Bureau Financial Services, Hewn Bird of Inns, Decal Bear, and also Shells Flyers, and more Brook Over Cattle Company, Burning Farms, Beef Belt, Beaver Town FFL, Barley Green, b &H Paving, and American Implement. This is a 29-18 halftime game for Scott City. So far in this third quarter, they're on a 16-14 run. It was 18-8 after one, 29-18 at the break, and now 45-32 here in the third. Scott City's led by as many as 16. The lead right now at 13 late third quarter. 
break this down a little bit, you got to think, all right, there's nine minutes and ten seconds to go in this game in real or in the game time here, including with the full fourth quarter and a minute ten here in this third. Scott City continue, needs to continue to flash, continue to have good possessions. Minute eight to go, third quarter. Metzger will get it across with the pass to Lawson Bailey. Final minute of this third quarter back to Metzger. Entry feed to Rumford. Bullet pass deflected and a turnover. Scott City's third turnover of the night. Final minute of this third quarter, and this is where Scott City last meeting saw Holcomb score nine in a row in the final couple minutes of the third quarter. Now miscommunication, but saved by Palacios with 45 seconds to work third quarter. Beavers in a man-to-man -man up 13, 45, 32. Palacios for a deep three. Too strong, long rebound to Dylan Metzger for Scott City with 35 seconds to go third quarter. One or maybe Scott City will go for the final shot this period. Fouls just one on Holcomb, two on Scott City. Rumford holds it out high near that half-court circle with 20 seconds to go third quarter. 13 points, Scott City lead, 45-32. Rumford still holding it with 15, 14. Nolan is going to guard him. He's standing inside the top of the key at the three-point arc with eight seconds. Seven. Now Rumford will go with six, with five, with four. Crossover dribble drives in. Spin move. Hands it off to Metzger. Layup. Yes! Right at the end of the third quarter. Metzger's first basket gives Scott City a 47-32 lead going into the fourth quarter. That play executed perfectly. We'll come back in a minute for the fourth quarter. This is Scott City basketball. City basketball. Click on the safety tab. An important safety message brought to you by Wheatland Electric, delivering energy for life. Your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Scott City up here in Holcomb, 47-32. There's eight minutes on the clock. It'll be Beaver basketball. Dylan Metzger scored his first points on a nice assist from Jackson Rumford in the third quarter. Scott City's led by as many as 16 in this game. They lead by 15. Opening seconds of the fourth quarter, Rumford, oh, he hits the deck, and he's going to be calling for the walk, trying to drive in. Turnover number four on Scott City. He leads Scott City tonight with 21 points. Lawson Bailey has 14 for Holcomb. They are led by Chris Palacios with 11 and Caden Hardy with 10. Maybe a little perspiration there on the floor, but that was a great idea by Rumford as just 13 seconds ticked off the fourth quarter clock. These first two minutes of this fourth quarter is where Scott City's going to have to... I, it's going to have to be one on the defensive end these first two minutes of this fourth quarter. Don't let Holcomb get a chance or a little sense of confidence here in this first couple of minutes. Into the front court with it is Holcomb. As now they hit the deck. Oh, lost that last touch, they'll say, by Lawson Bailey as Hardy slipped there with 7.38 to go. Still going to be Longhorn basketball down 47-32. Holcomb's hit seven threes. That's 21 of their 32 points. Scott City has just hit five, but Le Beaver's a lot of it, easy baskets in and no leaning into Rumford, leans, leaves it short, rebound, last touch, they'll say by Noel, and out of bounds, it'll go to Scott City, good job by Rumford, playing good defense there. Full court pressure by the Longhorns, inbound in, 7.32 to go, now Avery Noel with it, bounce pass to Alex Tarango, Tarango still with the backcourt, Scott City needs to get a little sense of urgency to bring it across, Rumford with it, now trying to get it across, just... Uh, just is not in time. The back-to-back Scott City turnovers with 7.20 to go. There's about 12 seconds run off the clock there. We're here on KSKL Scott City. Winner takes on Colby Friday night. More than likely could be 
in the early game, and now entry feed in the backcourt. It's Denniston with it, guarded by Alex Tarango. That's going to be a fun matchup next three years. Denniston gets a screen, goes to his right, trying to get a screen for Palacios. He has it up top, guarded by Metzger. He'll drive in. His layup is no good. Rebound underneath. There's no goes up, and he's fouled, and that'll be a foul on Dylan Metzger, his first. Scott said he's third of the half, and two free throws coming up for Drayton Knoll, who's three of four at the line with 7.02 to go. So Noel is three of four at the line. The 6'4 sophomore averages 10 points and five boards a game. Hits the backyard. Oh, it crawls in. He gets a nice friendly roll. 47 33, 702 to go as Jared Harrell in to replace Caden Hardy. Let's lead down to 14 for Scott City, first minute of the fourth quarter. Second free throw, good as well. He has four, make that five all from the line. Holcomb now five of eight from the line as they have cut the lead to 47-34. Now Trango's trapped. He saves it into play but finds Medsker here. Scott City's had issues. That's their third consecutive turnover. To 6.50 to go. They've had issues here last minute or so getting it across. And now driving in, Dennison's layup. That crawls off. Rebound loose and we're going to get a tie-up underneath. It'll be Holcomb's ball in the possession arrow with 6.44 to go. So Scott Scott City has turned it over three consecutive times here to begin this fourth quarter. Holcomb with the ball back down 13. As I mentioned, it's been critical here, these opening moments of the fourth quarter. Harrell with it. Now out high to Palacios, who has to retrieve it from behind with 6.38 to go. 47-34, Scott City lead, Holcomb ball. Trying to get a screen as Palacios, looking to drive in. He'll jump stop, hangs. Shot, no. Rebound, no. He's fouled, and that's going to be on Avery Noel. That'll be his fourth foul with 6.27 to go. So now Holcomb with three offensive rebounds in this fourth quarter here with 6.27 to go. Noel stays in there. Scott said with four fouls this half, just one on Holcomb with 6.25 left. And now trying to drive in now. Block on Alex Tarango. That is going to be his first. And all of a sudden, Scott said with five fouls with 6.23 to go. 6.23 left. 47-34 your score. Scott said with three turnovers. And now Dennison up top, he'll drive in. Pump, or now bounce pass, here's Harrell, left side, jumper, crawling off, rebound, loose. Holcomb with another rebound, blocked by Avery Nolan, that's gonna be it for him. He'll have four points and five fouls with 6.13 to go and team foul number six, but really the big situation here is Scott City not rebounding here. And Holcomb has had this possession forever, and Jared Harrell will have two free throws coming up. Just one foul caught on Holcomb here in this fourth quarter, or in the second half, I should say, with 6.13 to go. Jared Harrell looking for his first points of the night, and he gets it there. 47-35, 6.13 to go. Camden Volgamore checks in for Scott City to replace Noel, who is dismissed. And the free throw is good for Harrell. He's two of four at the line. Holcomb has hit their last six free throws. They're two within 11. And a little full court pressure in the backcourt, and there's a foul. With 6'11 to go, just the second foul on Holcomb this half. That'll be charged to Palacios, his first. But right so far in this fourth quarter, Scott said he has had an issue dealing with the full court pressure by Holcomb. They have not gotten it. The only time they've had it in the front court in this fourth quarter is on the opening series. Almost a walk by Bailey finds. Dylan Metzger now back to Bailey in the front court. He finds Renford underneath his shot up the glass, and he has 23. 49 36, and a big basket of 5.55 to go. Back to a 13 point Scott City lead. Just two minutes into this fourth quarter of screen. Here's Johnson with it. Now Palacios wanted to take the deep three, but good help defense is now right corner. Here's Corbin Johnson with it, guarded by Metzger, gets a screen. Looking for, he'll fire a three. He'll be short. Rebound. Holcomb with another. Oh, that's tipped in the hands of Volgamore. And Scott City can slow this one down a little bit, up 13 with five and a half to go. Beavers have never trailed in this one. Rumford with it up top, trying to direct traffic out high. He'll hand it off to Dylan Metzger. Metzger around his screen, goes right, and then he's bumped by Palacios. Really, the fouls right now for Holcomb, they probably need him. They are, have only got three fouls. That's the second foul, and Palacios with 5.18 to go. It's Cooper Titchener, Caden Hardy, and Dominique Orozco in to replace Brody Denniston, also Jared Harrell, and Drayton Knoll. Scott City can burn some time, but you don't want to be too patient. Up by 13 with 5.14 to go, and there's a turnover. Seventh turnover, here's a layup by Johnson, and back to 11-point game. 
49-38. Here's Volgamore with it with five minutes to go, and he almost loses, and he does. Scott City with another turnover, and a layup is no good. And two free throws coming up for Caden Hardy. Scott City had three turnovers through the first three quarters. They have five in this fourth quarter, and Holcomb can inch a little bit closer at the line. Dylan Metzger, his second foul. Two free throws for Caden Hardy, who's 68% of the line. But as I mentioned, Holcomb is 4-4 four four in this quarter. They've hit their last six free throws. They are 7-10 for the ballgame. Scott City just 2-2. Two of two. First to 2 with 4.58 to go is good. Hardy with 11, 49-39. 4.58 to go as Volgamore is out. Scott City with loss of Bailey Jackson, run for Dylan Duff, Drew, or Dylan Metzger, and Alex Cherango. Jared Harold to check in if Hardy hits this free throw. Looking for the team high, and he's got it. It's now a nine-point game, 49-40 with 4.58 to go. Mention this game is far from over. Holcomb right now on an 8-2 to two run here in the first three minutes as they apply full court pressure. Rumford with it. Almost got stripped out of there. Now here's Triangle in the front court. Weaves his way through traffic, then flips it to Lawson Bailey. Now to Rumford toward the right block. Gets it stripped out of his hands and out of bounds with 4.45 to go. Fouls have been seven on Scott City, three on Holcomb this second half. It'll be Scott City's ball, 49 to 40. The first time it's been down to single digits in this second half. Scott City's led by as many as 16. Duff with it, trying to get it in. Bailey that's thrown away. Six turnover on Scott City this quarter, nine for the game. You don't need to force it. You've got the lead. 4.35 to go. Holcomb will take it on the front court, and they're going to call a reach in foul on Lawson Bailey, and that's his first. And team foul number eight. Things are starting to get interesting. That was the right call. And a one and one. And now Corbin Johnson, who's 74% at the line, will have a one and one coming up. Scott City starting to lose their composure a little bit with a nine point leader with four and a half to go on an eight to two run as Holcomb. And they have all six of their eight points from the line. They'll bring in Caden Hardy to replace Cooper Titchener. A one and one for Corbin Johnson, his first trip to line for the freshman. He has seven. He's a 74% free throw shooter. Four and a half to go in this one. Front end of the one and one is rimming in. He'll get the bonus. Holcomb has hit their last seven free throws. Actually, they are seven to seven, making their last nine. It's 49-41 with 4.30 to go. You knew they had a big run in them, and right now they've got seven of their nine points in this quarter for the line and make it eight of the ten. It's now a seven-point game. The pressure Scott said he's had issue handling. Here's Alex Trango with 4.28 to go. Now to... To Bailey and he gets it stripped and it's another turnover. Here's Colt come down the floor layup, no but a foul. And Harrell has two free throws. Scott City has to take better care of the basketball. That's the issue right now. Alex Tarango is second and Holcomb with two more free throws coming with 4.19 to go. That's the problem. Scott City's not taking care of the ball here in this fourth quarter. Two free throws for Harrell. The first is good, and Holcomb has been automatic at the line. 49-43 with 4.19 to go. This is a 47-33 game going into the fourth quarter as Eloy Ruelas is in for the first time since Hugoton back in January for Duff. Second free throw coming up. It's a five-point game, 49-44, a 12-2 run, and we have a timeout taken by Scott City and Coach Brian Gentry. They're down to one. 4.18 to go. Holcomb in this game now all of a sudden, 49-44. Back in a minute, this is Beaver basketball. Beaver.
1986. Farm Bureau Financial Services. It's your future. Let's protect it. A 12-2 run for Holcomb. Ten of their points have come from the foul line in this fourth quarter, and Scott City's lead is now down to 49-44. This is the closest that Holcomb has been since early in the first quarter. The Beavers will inbound it. They have down to one timeout. Lawson Bailey with it, 4.15 to go. Bailey is trying to get it across. Finds Metzger with 4.12 to go. Finds Jackson Rumford. Holds it now. Eloy Ruelas, he loses it, but picks it back up and saves it. 4.05 to go. Scott City up by five of the ball. This is a 15-point game going to the fourth quarter. Holcomb is 10. A high low to Bailey. Catches it. Pump fakes, and he gets the defender up in the air and draws the foul on Jared Harold, his first, and the team's fourth with 3.56 six to go. Holcomb has 12 points in the quarter. They are 10 at 10 from the line. They have four, seven Scott City turnovers in this fourth quarter. The Beavers only had three through the first three quarters. Lawson Bailey with it looking to drive in and he hits the deck. Oh, they're going to call a charge. You've got to be kidding me. He has to hold his composure. Bailey second and the team's ninth. That was ridiculous. Back in is Drayton Null. He will replace Jared Harrell. The fouls are a little lopsided. That one was probably the first one I really disagreed with all night. And Holcomb with the ball down five with 3.45 to go. Things getting very interesting here. Ball deflected but picked up by Corbin Johnson. Guarded by Bailey. Right side it goes to Dominic Orozco with 3.35 to go. Orozco drives in back up top to Johnson. Drives right side. His layup is crawling off. Rebound fought for and ripped by Lawson Bailey. And it'll be a tie-up. It'll be Scott City's ball. Got to keep your composure if you're the Beavers. Jared Harrell in to replace Drayton Knoll. Having an offense for defense there with 3.29 to go. Holcomb to maintain the full court pressure. Scott City has not, or has only scored one basket in this fourth quarter. It's a 12 to two Holcomb run. Bailey with it in the backcourt, 3.25 to go. Scott City has one timeout left. Oh, they'll air mail it out of bounds. Scott City with eight turnovers in this fourth quarter and Holcomb with the ball again down five as they'll bring back in Brody Denniston to replace Dominic Orozco. It's 49-44 with 3.23 to go. Palacios to inbound it in. The backcourt to Denniston. Scott City has led the entire way. Denniston with it up top, goes to his right, hands it or flips it to Palacios. Right side to Corbin Johnson, guarded by Bailey. Drives in in the paint, now up top to Hardy. There underneath, oh, that's a walk. That's a walk on Hardy. Holcomb's first turnover of the fourth quarter. They now have nine for the game with 3.10 to go. Oh, the intensity is up to another couple notches here in this fourth quarter. Bailey gets it into Metzger, lobs it back to Bailey with 3.08 to go. Takes it in the front court. Drives right corner to Tarango. Turns down the three, gets it to Rumford. Now he's quickly double teamed. He's stripped and stolen away. Back it goes to Holcomb. Here's Palacios, open for three. No, rebound Metzger. And a lot of contact, but they let it play. And with 2.48 to go, stolen by Johnson. Pivots, shot, no, good. Oh, it's good and a foul. You've got to be kidding me. It is 49-46 with 2.45 to go. A foul on Dylan Metzger is third, and all of a sudden, Scott City cannot buy a call in this fourth quarter. That was not a foul. All the fouls called in the game. You've got to be kidding me. 2.45 to go. It's 49-46. And Stu Chance explains it. Johnson's free throw too strong, and the rebound to Jackson Rumford. But Holcomb all the way back to within three with 2.40 to go, 49-46. Here's Metzger with it, holds it. And then, boy, there's contact, no foul with 2.35 to go. Rumford with the right corner, looking to drive in. Scott said he's got eyes cold from the court here in this fourth quarter, but nine turnovers as well. Bailey into Rumford, catches it, and a whistle and a foul on the floor. That's the fifth team foul on Holcomb this half, and a little Bronx cheer from the Scott City crowd. Holcomb has scored 14 points in this fourth quarter. A 14-2 Holcomb run in this fourth quarter to get to within three with 2.23 to go. Bailey to inbound, it finds Rumford. 
up top to Alex Taranga. If you're Scott City, you don't need to score. Bailey will drive right side. He'll lay it up through contact. Oh, he'll get that one down. They let a play, yes, 16, 51-46 with 2.12 to go. Big 10-0 run into Dubai, Scott City there. Up top it goes to Palacios, 2.04 to go. Here's Palacios driving in his runner. Calls in for two, he has 13. 51-48, timeout. Holcomb with 159 to go. They're down to one timeout as well. We'll come back in a minute. This is Beaver Basketball. Basketball. For exceptional service in real estate, put Stephanie Shapland at Shapland Real Estate to work for you. Property homework is what we do best at Shapland Real Estate. We put forth every effort to get results that move you. Our expertise in buying and selling residential, commercial, and agriculture property is built on the tradition of trust and thoroughness that you deserve. Chaplin Real Estate takes pride in our community and in cheering on our students in all that they do. Give Chaplin Real Estate a call or visit our website today. One forty-eight. Scott City has seen a 15-point lead after the third quarter, down to three for a second time. It was 47-32 going in the fourth quarter. Holcomb has turned it up defensively. Scott City has not been able, able to handle the pressure. And they have nine turnovers in this fourth quarter. Holcomb is 10 of 11 at the line in this fourth quarter as well. With 1.59 to go, inbound into Jackson Rumford. Now goes to Lawson Bailey. He'll put it on the floor with a minute 55 to go. He'll take it, trying to get it across the 10-second line. Now to Eloy Ruelas. He's trapped out high, bounce pass to Jackson Rumford. Just hold it. Play with the weave up top. You got the lead. Get it into your top three th shooters. Metzger with it up top of the minute 40 to go. Scott City with a three-point lead in the ball. 51-48, Lawson Bailey. Hold it. Just hold it. Go up top with it. They'll get it in. They'll throw it away. You don't need to do that. Turnover, and Holcomb can tie it with a three. Driving in is Dennison. Layup. It's a one-point game. 51-50. 126 to go. Scott City's lead is down to one. They'll get it down to Rumford. He'll drive in. He'll lane, bank shot. Yes, he's got it. 53-50, 114 to go. Holcomb with the ball, down three again. Minute 10 to go. They have it up top to Johnson. Almost took the three. Here's a three for the tie. Short rebound Rumford for Scott City. And then the hands of Metzger with a minute to go. Hardy had a chance to tie that. Rumford with the seventh board. Metzger needs to get it across. He finds Ruelas. Oh, he loses it in a turnover. Here's Ruelas, 50 seconds to go. Almost poked away from behind. Dennison's layup is good. It's a one-point game. 53-52, 46.9 to go. Timeout, Holcomb their last. 46.9, let's come back in 30 seconds. This is Beaver basketball. trying to hold on and they are hanging on by a thread. It was a 15 point game going into the fourth quarter. It's down to one for a second time. But Scott City has not taken care of the basketball in this fourth quarter and Holcomb has feasted. 53-52, Scott City up by one with 46.9 to go. Holcomb is out of timeout. Scott City has one, but here's the possession arrow. It favors Holcomb. The Beavers need to get it across, run a weave up top, make Holcomb foul you. They only have five fouls in the second half. Scott City has 10. Possession arrow, as I mentioned, favors Holcomb. Avery Knoll fouled out early in the fourth quarter with 6.13 to go. Holcomb is 10 of 11 at the line in the fourth quarter. The Longhorns will pick up Scott City in the backcourt here as Bailey can run the baseline to inbound it in. Keep in mind, Scott City has one timeout to go. You don't need to force things. 
Bailey to inbound it in, trying to avoid the five count. Je oh, it's that one tipped with 46.9. No time came off the clock, and that bails out the Beavers there. It was knocked out by Hardy. He had a three to almost tie it moments ago. Bailey with baseball pass it down the floor to Rumford, and it's loose. Picked up by Rumford. He saves the possession, and he's fouled with 42.3 to go. That's the final foul to give for Holcomb. For Holcomb, 53-52. They get it on Corbin Johnson, his fourth. 42.3 to go. Scott City will have to inbound it underneath their own basket with a one-point lead at 43-53-52. Four, it's a 19-6 run for Holcomb in this fourth quarter. Bailey with it. Drives right side out high to Eloy Ruelas, and they foul him. And Ruelas, who's stepping up for the first time. He is just 43% from the line this year. The foul on Dennis Dennis first. Team foul number seven with 37.7 to go. Nolan, he'll replace Jared Harrell. Ruelas, who has not played since game two of Hugoton. The sophomores free throw. No, rebound Holcomb. Holcomb can take their first lead of the night here with 34 seconds to go. 30 seconds to go, 53-52, Scott City off the screen. Here's Palacios, he'll drive right side. His layup is good. They have the first lead of the night with 54-53 with 20 seconds to go. Here's Metzger with it with 18 seconds. Left side, Ruelas, he has it. Needs help, finds Rumford, he loses it. Picks it back up, trying to back his way in. Up top to Ruelas, here's a three. No, rebound Holcomb and they are fouled. Four seconds and they're fouled. Unbelievable. Jackson Rumford, second foul. And Scott City, who had led all night except the last 20 seconds of this game, as Corbin Johnson has two free throws. First one is good. It's 54 50, uh, 50, yeah, 55 53. 4.6 to go. Jared Harrell, Chris Palacios in, 4.6 seconds to go. Gentry, Coach Brian Gentry won a timeout. And the free throw, no. Rebound loose. Picked up by Rumford and a quick timeout with 3.3 to go. And Scott City burns their final timeout. They need the two to tie. It's a full, we'll keep it right here. Scott City led 47-32 going into the fourth quarter. Holcomb, thanks to 11 Scott City turnovers and pressure in the backcourt, Holcomb took their first lead 20 seconds to go on a Chris Palacios layup to go up 54-53. This is going to be a gut-wrenching loss for Scott City if they end up losing this. They did everything right all game. They led by 16 in the third quarter, by 15 going into the fourth. And Holcomb just turned up the pressure on the defensive end. See what Scott City draws up. What a finish. We knew it was going to be a good game. We thought it would be coming down to the wire, but how the game has played, not expected to take this course. Scott City with a chance to tie it or go to overtime, down two with 3.9 seconds to go at 55-53. Holcomb, Scott City out of timeouts, Bailey to inbound it. Holcomb will pick up Scott City half court. Bailey holds it. Now they get it to Metzger. He has to take it across. Once again, it's half court heat for the win. It's off the top of the back or rim or off the backboard. And Holcomb steals one from Scott City. 55-53. Unbelievable. I'm speechless. Scott City ends their season at 9 and 12. Holcomb is 12 and 9. They'll get Colby on Friday night. Post game to begin after this three minute break. This is Beaver basketball. 
life is all about your vision. That's what Dr. Joshua Gooden and the staff at Scott City Eye Center believe. They care about your health and are dedicated to exceptional service to give your vision the level of attention it deserves. Dr. Gooden can diagnose and treat an array of eye diseases, conditions, and problems. It's easy to see that Scott City Eye Center cares for your vision. Schedule an appointment with Dr. Joshua Gooden 